Now quickly on the time sheeting, looking at time also, um, time sheets can also be embedded inside Power Apps, so Power BPM, which again, if you're already in the tool, probably it's, a, it's the easiest way to, to use it. Notice that the webinar 2021, which we just created some 20 minutes ago, is in here already in my timesheet because I'm assigned to the task, which we also changed the name into XYZ. It's here already. My time period, however, is uh, closed, so I can't really do a lot, but I can move it perhaps to the next week, open up the task, and add in, for instance, five hours, three hours there, and that's just eight in total. And the reason for why we're only seeing two days is because this week ends or the month ends on the Tuesday. So that's how it works as well. If I then have to categorize my time spent on this activity, first of all, I could add a comment simply for invoicing reporting purposes like this, very basic. Once you write it, it's stored, no save button at all. I could also split into various uh, categories that I decide. So CapEx, then OPEX, or billable, non-billable, and therefore, instead of writing just five, I could go in and say, this is two hours and three hours, and still it adds up to five. And this data will then be shown inside the Gantt chart uh, or the timeline, if that's what you prefer. So that's how the timeline, uh, sort of the time sheeting works, but also we can open up here the search act button and then write anything. It's extremely fast and it looks through all the tools, so not just Power PPM, we could have activated this up against Azure DevOps, uh, Jira, um, et cetera, monday.com for that matter. As long as there's sort of an API or we can use Power Automate flows as we have here to pull in the data and make it available more or less in real time, which is pretty cool as well. Um, there we go. And for time sheeting purposes, if you have non-project work or sort of operational work, you can configure this. Uh, so admins of uh, Time for Teams can quickly go in and the admin icon and create other time periods and figure how the timesheets should look and behave. Uh, let me just go back here um, and also have an approval area, which I'll show you in just a second. I just wanted to show you this part called admin projects. So here you can go in and create admin time easily, or other admin projects, um, and also actually change what sort of icon you want to show for that specific uh, type of work. So again, if we want to have people stay in teams, of course, you can do that for, for the entire solution I've shown, but also for time sheeting in particular. So right now it's launching my time sheeting application. Same thing as we saw before, just shown right now inside Microsoft Teams as an add-in. Um, and again, I can do various things up here like uh, approval overview, because if I am the manager, I also need to approve other people's time sheets that we have built in, where I can even mouse over and see for instance, what happened there? What happened there for Christian in that specific week? Or filter by uh, rejected timesheets, approved timesheets, approve them from here or reject them, add a comment to the person, and so on. So, of course, we have that ready as well. Same thing for dashboards. So that if you want to do a quick and dirty report on what you're working on, it's embedded as well in an early version, though, in this case, and where you can then click and see immediately what we're looking at. 